Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Rocket Stock. In this tutorial, we're going to create an anamorphic inspired look inside of After Effects. Okay, so a little backstory here. I got inspired for this tutorial when I was researching anamorphic adapters for DSLR cameras. I like the aesthetic of anamorphic footage, and when you adapt an anamorphic lens to a DSLR camera, the look is usually a bit more imperfect, with moderate to heavy chromatic aberrations at the corners. I decided to see if I could recreate that look inside of After Effects. I discovered that feature film editor Vashi Nidomansky has already developed a free After Effects template for creating the anamorphic look of a 40mm Panavision Primo lens. If you want a technical dive into recreating an accurate anamorphic look, his site is a great place to start. I'll have a link where you can find his template called the Vashi Morphic 40 on the Rocket Stock blog post for this tutorial. We're going to be creating more of an anamorphic inspired look, specifically the anamorphic look you get from a DSLR, which has subtle imperfections. Nothing's going to be technically perfect, so you can dial in the look to fit your taste. With that being said, let's jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select one of my clips and add it to a new composition. And this is a shot of my dog here in the woods. And as you can see, she's wondering why we're filming in these haunted woods. But she's center frame, and that's really good for this type of look we're going to create today. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit later uh, with this anamorphic style. So what I want to do here is I want to right click and go to composition settings. And I'm going to go ahead and name this pre-comp. And this is a 1920 by 1080 size composition, and I'm just going to click OK. So one common misconception about the anamorphic look is that all you need to do is add black bars to the top and bottom of your footage. So I'm just going to drag in some black bars here. All right, guys, we're done. Thanks for watching. Not really. I'm going to go ahead and delete those black bars. And I'm just going to delete that from our project. Although anamorphic footage typically is the 2.35 aspect ratio, there's a lot more to it than that. And today we're going to create our final look in an actual 2.35 aspect ratio. So we won't need to add in those black bars. And this is a much better way to export your anamorphic footage too, as we're going to look at a little bit later. All right, so what we want to do inside of this pre-comp is add a little bit of optical distortion. And we're going to use the Bezier Warp Effect, and this is one of the big proponents that was a part of Vashi's template. It's a nice way to kind of emulate an anamorphic lens style. So I'm just going to right click here and go to New Adjustment Layer. And with that adjustment layer selected, I'm going to come up here to Effect. And under Distort, we're going to select the very first option, which is Bezier Warp. So the idea here is we want to match the warping of an anamorphic lens, and it kind of bends at the corners here which kind of makes the center frame kind of bulge out a little bit, and that kind of naturally draws a viewer's eyes right to the center of the frame, and it kind of makes the subject here pop out a lot better. So we want to adjust the four corner vertexes on this Bezier warp effect. And if we come over here to the effect, you'll see quite a few different options here listed out for each of these points. Again, we're just adjusting these corners, so just look for the ones that say vertex. So I've got top left vertex here, and we're gonna adjust these by 60 pixels. And so the top two, we're gonna actually add 60 pixels to, and the bottom two, we're gonna subtract. This will make a little more sense when you see it in practice. So I'm just gonna come up here for top left vertex. On the second value, I'm just gonna type in 60. And you'll see how that kind of bent that down there a little bit. So now I'm gonna come here to right top vertex, and I'm gonna type in 60 on the second value again. So you can see we've bent both of these corners down. So we wanna do that same thing to these bottom two here. So I'm gonna come back over here to bottom right vertex. And the second value is 1080, so I'm just gonna click in there. And then I'm just gonna type in negative 60 and hit enter. And that's gonna change that to 1020. And that's when I went ahead and brought that up there. And then we're gonna find left bottom vertex here. And I'm gonna select that and I'm again type in negative 60 at the end of 1080. And that's gonna give us 1020. So now you can see we've kind of pinched in all four corners here. And as a result, it adds a slight bulge here to the very center of our frame. One other thing we wanna do is under quality over here, I'm gonna bring this all the way up to 10. That's just gonna help minimize any aliasing that might occur on our footage. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna actually cut off the top and the bottom part of this frame again, because we can see this black area is here and we don't wanna see that. So if we go ahead and pre-compose this in an actual 2.35 aspect ratio comp, that'll cut the top and the bottom off. So I'm gonna come back over here to my project I'm gonna select my pre-comp here. I'm just gonna add that to a new composition. And I'm gonna right click here and go to composition settings. And we'll just call this our output. And for the width and the height right here, you can see, if we look over here, you can see an aspect ratio right here. It's 1.78. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna select the bottom height here. If I just click and drag this down, you can see the aspect ratio over there on the right hand side is changing. And you can actually see it updating here in our comp view. And you can see right now it's at 1.98. So I'm actually just gonna type in here 816, and you'll see that now changes to a 2.35 aspect ratio. And I'll just go ahead and click okay. 
And now we can actually see we've cropped in on our footage and we can go ahead and output this now to actual true 2.35 aspect ratio. Now, if you're wondering where the black bars are, if we go ahead and upload this to YouTube, it's actually gonna automatically add the black bars to the top and bottom because it's gonna be fitting this into a 16 by nine sized video player. But if you actually upload this to another hosting site like Vimeo, it will actually go ahead and conform the video right to this 2.35 aspect ratio. All right, so what we wanna do now is actually split this footage up into three different channels, red, green, and blue. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and select my pre-comp and I'm gonna come up here to effect and under channel, I'm gonna select the shift channels effect and that's just gonna apply that, that way we don't have to apply this three times. So now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this comp twice. So with it selected, I'll come up here to edit and then duplicate. And then with that selected again, I'll come back up to edit and then duplicate. So now we have three different copies. And just so we can see this a little bit easier on this first copy, I'm gonna select the color here and I'm gonna change this to be green. And on the next one, I'm gonna change it to be red. And on the final one, I'm gonna change that to be blue. So I'm just gonna solo the first composition here, the green one. And with it selected, I'm gonna come up here to shift channels and I'm gonna say take red from off and take blue here from full off. And we'll leave the green channel alone so it should be green just like this and that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna unsolo that and I'm gonna solo the red channel now. And with it selected, we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna leave the red channel alone. We're gonna select green, set it to full off and to blue, set that to full off. And now we only have a red channel. Let's repeat that one more time. Solo the blue comp. Come up here to red, select it to full off, and to green, set that to full off. So now we effectively have each of our channels set. And all we need to do now is select each of our compositions here and set them to be a screen mode. And if I do that to these first two, you're not gonna see our footage looks exactly as it did before. And if you don't see that mode right there, go ahead and just toggle the switches right there. This is gonna allow us to add in our chromatic aberrations, which are common on DSLR anamorphic footage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my green channel here and I'm gonna come here to effect. And then under distort, I'm actually gonna select optics compensation. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on reverse lens distortion and then I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see this a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna increase the field of view here. And you can see as I do that, we get some of that chromatic abrasion right here at the corners of our footage. But for the most part, it leaves the center pretty much intact. So for the green channel here, I'm gonna set this to be 10. So it's quite subtle there around the fringing around the edges. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the red channel. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna add the effect distort optics compensation. And I'm gonna check on reverse lens distortion. And with this one, I'm gonna change it to 13. Just so it's offset a little bit more. And you can see we get this nice kind of blue and kind of yellow red fringing here. It's subtle, but again, you can dial this into taste if you want it to be more extreme or less extreme. Now, another effect I like to apply to the red channel here, just to add a little bit of variation to it, is I'm gonna come up here to effect, and under blur, I'm gonna select a radial blur. This is kind of interesting here. So I'm gonna come down here under type, and I'm gonna change this to be zoom. And for the anti-aliasing, I'm gonna set this to be high. And default, it looks quite weird. You can see it's really too zoomed and we're getting quite a bit of chromatic aberrations around the edges, but again, the center here for the most part is left pretty much intact. I'm gonna change the amount here. I'm just gonna set this to three. Again, just so it's subtle, but it adds a little bit more variation to that chromatic aberration. I'll go ahead and check that on and off so you can see just a slight difference there. I'll zoom in here again, just so we can see that a little bit closer. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to add to our anamorphic look is a little more vignette and a little more blurring at each of the corners. So I'm just gonna right click here and create a new adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna select it, hit enter, and I'm gonna rename this Vin slash blur. And with that adjustment layer selected, I'm gonna come up here to the ellipse tool and I'm gonna select it. I'm just gonna double click on it. Then I'll add an oval mask on top of our footage. And under the mask settings here, I'm just gonna check this down. I wanna set the mask feather here to be 200. Then under mask expansion, I'm gonna set that to be negative 100. And I'll just click on that. And on our mask, I'm gonna go ahead and set that from add to subtract. And now for our blur, I'm gonna come here to effect. And I'm actually gonna add a CC radial fast blur to this. I find that the CC radial fast blur is a little more subtle at lower settings than the radial blur. So I'm gonna set the amount here to be four. I'll just zoom in here again. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna turn off the mask visibility there so we don't see that. But again, we're just applying a slight blur here to the corners. And again, you can adjust this to taste. You can see 
how that kind of looks. Now for our vignette, I'm just gonna come here to effect and I'm gonna apply a color correction curves effect here. Again, on that adjustment layer and just to darken this down a touch, I'm just gonna select this bottom point on the curve. And as you can see, as I pull this over to the right, it's darkening everything around the corners. And again, you can dial this into your specific shot. But now if we go ahead and check this layer on and off, you can see that added blur and vignette we're doing to our footage. Again, this helps draw attention to our subject that's in the center of the frame in our particular shot here. All right, so something else that's always associated with anamorphic lenses is the oval-shaped bokeh that you get. And we can also kind of emulate that as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click and do another adjustment layer. I'm just gonna click on that. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna call it focus. And with that layer selected, I'm gonna come here to effect. And for blur, we want to use the camera lens blur. Now this blur can take a little bit of time to render. So just keep that in mind when you wanna render out your project. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the blur radius here. Something like 40. I want to change the shape here to be an octagon. I'm going to turn on repeat edge pixels here so we don't see that fringing around the edges. As you can see right now, the bokeh is quite subtle, but it is round. So if we want to change this to be more of an oval shape, all we need to do is come over here to aspect ratio, and I'm going to change this from 1 to 0.5. Now you can see we're getting those oval shaped bokeh effects that are commonly associated with anamorphic lenses. So the idea here is we would go ahead and keyframe this blur radius from something like 40 down to zero, just kind of like a rack focus. Obviously, depending on your shot, will kind of depend on how this effect looks. But again, if you want to create those anamorphic style bokeh effects, all you need to do is set this aspect ratio to be 0.5. Now, another trick I like to emulate with this effect is a little bit of focus breathing on the lens. Now, most anamorphic lenses probably won't have much focus breathing in reality. And that's where the field of view slightly adjusts as the focus range changes. But again, with our stylized look we're creating here, this focus breathing can just add a little bit more realism to this shot. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna switch out my original shot here so we can see this a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back to my pre-comp. I'm just gonna drag in this shot of this rabbit I've got here. Just apply that underneath that and you can see it's just drag and drop. Now I'll go back to the output. And now we can see this shot is blurry. So I'm gonna wrap back to the beginning of my comp. I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. And on the focus layer, under the effects and controls, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the blur radius here to 40. I'm gonna create a keyframe for that. And then what I wanna to do to kind of emulate the focus breathing is I'm gonna come up here to effect and under distort, I'm gonna go down here to optics compensation again. And I wanna apply this actually before the camera lens blur. And I'm gonna go ahead and check on reverse lens distortion. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase this now to something like 30. You can see how that slightly adjusts the outer edges of our frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe that as well at the very beginning. And I'm just going to select that layer and hit U on the keyboard so we can see those two keyframes. Now I'm just going to move down here just a little bit in time. And I'm going to turn the blur radius now all the way down to zero. Again, we're kind of emulating that rack focus. And then I'll set the field of view here again all the way down to zero. Now one thing I recommend doing is on this second keyframe for the camera lens blur, I'm going to hit F9 on the keyboard. And that's going to make that an easy ease keyframe that just kind of adjusts that a little bit easier as it ends but I'm not gonna do that for the optics compensation. And that's because it kind of naturally eases out as it gets to the end value, even on a normal keyframe. So it should be fine as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this so you can see what that emulated focus breathing looks like. All right, so now we can see on the RAM preview, as this rack focus comes to an end, the field of view on the lens slightly changes. And I think this is a nice touch this adds, it just makes it a little more realistic. All right, so the final touch I wanna to add to my anamorphic inspired look here is gonna be some film grain. Now this isn't necessary, but I think it matches the aesthetic quite well. And film is usually associated with anamorphic footage. Now I highly recommend using film grain overlays if you have any. Rocket Stock actually has a pack called the Emulsion Pack. There's a bunch of 4K film grain overlays that are really easy to use. And those are gonna render a lot faster. However, if you don't have any film grain overlays, you don't need to worry. We actually have some film grain built right into After Effects. So I'm just gonna right click here and create a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this grain. And with that selected, I'm gonna come here to Effect, and then under Noise and Grain, I'm gonna select Add Grain. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is this effect renders very slowly, so make sure you have a lot of time to render if you are gonna use this style of grain. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come here to Viewing Mode, I'm gonna change this to be Final Output. And for the preset, you can see we have various film grains we can select from. I'm gonna select this Eastman Color Negative here, 100T. And I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see this film grain a little bit easier. If I come back to the beginning of my comp where the camera lens blur is heavy. 
we can see the subtle film grain that's been applied to our footage. It actually looks quite nice, but again, this does render very slow. I'm gonna dial this back just a little bit on the intensity here to be 0.4 instead of one. Again, it just dials that back a touch. Maybe difficult to see with the compression of this tutorial, but that looks quite nice and accents the footage quite nice on the shallow depth of field look we're going for with this rack focus. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed creating this anamorphic inspired look. If you want, you can download the After Effects file that I created today from the Rocket Stock blog. If you're interested in adding in real anamorphic lens flares on your footage, you should definitely check out the Radium Pack from Rocket Stock. It includes over 120 lens flares that have been shot with an anamorphic lens. All right, guys, once again, this has been Charles Jager with Rocket Stock. Thanks for watching.